A team of engineers from the University of Maryland have made an inflatable robot that can beat the first level of the classic video game Super Mario Brothers in under 90 seconds. The mechanism looks similar to a three-fingered hand. Its movements are meticulously coordinated using the emerging technology known as soft robotics. The fingers apply varying amounts of pressure in response to airflow rather than electricity. The team's advancements in the soft robotics field could have major implications for health and safety devices in the future. CBSN technology reporter Dan Patterson joins us now for more on this. Hi, Dan. Tell us a little bit more about soft robotics and, and how it works. I mean, we heard there that it works with air pressure instead of electricity. Is that right? Hi, Tanya. So um, this team at the University of Maryland uh, kind of pioneered a new innovation from soft robotics. Now, I, I want you to close your eyes and think about what a robot looks like. You probably imagine something like C-3PO in Star Wars, metal with wires sticking out of it. Uh, soft robotics, exactly the opposite. They look a lot more like an octopus. Why? They have soft tissue that's made out of silicon or plastic that allows them to do things that hard robots just can't do, like play video games or even wrap around the heart. Again, because these are soft tissues, they can interoperate with other soft tissues. Now, what this team at the University of Maryland did is build what's called an integrated computer circuit. So this means it's one component. Uh, that also means it's very easy to 3D print. And this one component, just like a regular electronic computer chip, well, it controls the movements of this robot. But like you said, Tanya, its movements are controlled and the, the uh, motor is controlled uh, instead of by electricity or powered rather instead of by electricity, but by airflow or water or other fluids. Uh, this means it can be incredibly sensitive, delicate and do things like with your fingers that a hard robot, say C-3PO, just can't. Fascinating to hear how the engineers at the University of Maryland were able to create this technology and, and make it malleable like tissues. So, of course, the implications of this are very exciting. It sounds like you could use things like these have medical uh, uses, right? I mean, I could just imagine all the ways that you could use devices like this in surgery, no? Yeah. So once again, a hard robot, again, you don't want metal making any sort of, uh, or any other hard object making any sort of kind of nuanced or graceful action. You want a little bit of give and play just like you do with soft tissue. So another example, Tanya, are people who have motor challenges um, with, with their hands. Uh, there are soft robotic gloves uh, that will allow you to, if you can't have the nuance with your own hand uh, if you have an injury or some other challenge. Uh, what these soft robotic hands do is allow you to control fine pressure, but without overdoing it or without breaking something. Um, so yeah, definitely we could see these. Uh, there are all sorts of biomedical applications for these things. But when I talked to uh, the developers, the engineers at the University of Maryland, what they told me is that you know some of the innovations we might not have even pioneered yet. And they're really looking at things like medicine, um, like drug delivery and uh, surgery as real places that this could be, soft robotics could be incredibly helpful for millions of people. And so, you know, we know that it can now, where it is right now, that it can defeat Super Mario Brothers and that it has all kinds of implications in biomedical field and the rest of it. But, you know, this seems like a very significant scientific achievement. Is it as significant as it seems to me? Yeah. Um, look, this is uh, fascinating to kind of think about in the abstract, something that doesn't require electricity being uh, so fine-tuned that it can play video games or even go inside your heart. Uh, but 
really what this is is potential, Tanya. Uh, this opens up new doors and new avenues. And really, kind of like uh, a lot of other tech platforms, this is a platform. They've open sourced the, the documents, the files, the creation process. Uh, this is a platform for others to build on. This 3D printing component is, uh, we shouldn't undersell this. Uh, because this is an integrated circuit on uh, one component, uh, it uses this new type of polymer, but it's it's not um, an uncommon polymer. Polymer. It's something that almost anyone, if you are at least in a research or academic environment, can download the schematics and print your own. This also means you can alter your own, uh, alter the the schematics to this. So once again, Tanya, this is significant not just because of what it does now, but because it is a platform for future innovation in healthcare. Fascinating stuff. Dan Patterson, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about it. Good to see you.